with the terrain slicing and dynamic loading kit, uh, obviously the main functionality is the terrain slicing tool and the dynamic loading portion of the kit. However, there are a lot of other additional uh, smaller tools which are very useful. One of those tools is the Tileable Terrain Maker, uh, which is basically designed around the idea of making a single terrain tileable with itself or making a group of terrains tileable with each other. So making them seamless. So I've got a terrain here which I've sliced into four pieces now. Obviously they all fit very nicely and snugly together because I just sliced uh, the terrain. However, let's say if I wanted to do some editing here. Uh, maybe I wanted to raise this terrain. Uh, let's see. So let's say I wanted to maybe adjust this here. You know, obviously that doesn't look very nice, but. All right, so let's say I did something like that. One of these terrains now don't don't match up. So I can use my Tileable Terrain Maker to fix that. Simply click on the first terrain in the group, or if you're just using a single terrain, click on that terrain, and choose Component, Terrain Slicing Kit, Tileable Terrain Maker. First thing we need to do is enter how many terrains are in a group. In this case, we have four, two rows by two columns. And as long as that they're all named correctly, i.e. underscore one, underscore two, underscore two, underscore one, and so on. And my first terrain is in this terrain one one field. Then I can click auto fill terrains. And you can see they've all been added. You can also manually add those as well. So if I want to tile the inner edges, I choose this tile inner edges. Now my affected region width is at 1 here, so this probably won't look very good, but we'll go ahead and uh, click it anyways. So yeah, you can see because that gap, there's quite a gap there between the two edges, so it just kind of makes this very steep angle, which doesn't look very good. So I'll undo that by pressing Control z or Edit, Undo, Make Height Map, it's tileable. And then we can increase that affected region a little bit. And you can see we've got a nice, much nicer effect there. So now, if that wasn't to your liking, you could increase that effective region width even more. And because I have a very smooth terrain here, the edge here is very noticeable. Uh, there's also some some difference between the alpha maps. So I can also use my make alpha maps tileable button here to try to to correct that a little bit. And it doesn't make a difference in this case, however, in some cases it will. Now this make alpha map tileable button will not work too well. I mean, all of it does is basically takes an average from both sides, from both sides of uh, one terrain to the other, or if you're using a single terrain from one edge to the other and it just averages them together. So you'll get kind of this mirror effect. With the height maps, you will not get that effect because the height map algorithm actually, uh, it starts along the edges and it averages them together, but as it moves farther away from the edge, it uses more and more of the existing height map on that terrain rather than the average. So. Uh, I could show that off a little bit better if I try to make this group tileable with itself. So I'm just going to duplicate these terrains. And then move them over by a thousand. So Well, something does not look right there, does it? <clears throat> I believe these need to be moved over a little bit more. There we go. Huh. Well, 
did not like me duplicating that, that's for sure. So, let's try this again. Not sure why that mass duplicate didn't work, but okay. So we've got our train here, our group here duplicated. So when I make changes to one, when I make changes to this group, it's going to make the changes to this group. So this is just going to allow us to see how this tool is making the group tileable with itself. And the reason you'd want to do that is with use uh, with like an endless world type of uh, configuration on your world component. So. Uh, we're going to check only tile outer edges in this case. If you want to tile both, you'll just leave both those options disabled. And we'll try it again. So you can see when the height map's tiled here, we don't get like a mirror effect on both sides. Instead, it's, it starts from an average and then it tapers off into the existing height map. So that looks pretty good right there. And we do have a problem with our alpha map. So we can go ahead and tile that as well. And you'll see here how we get kind of a greenish color on both sides, which is not really what we want. I mean, it would be much better if this reddish color on the mountains kind of just flowed into the other side. Uh, however, there's really no way for me to, to do that. I mean, how you're texturing your terrain might depend on a lot of different things. You might be texturing it based on uh, the slope or different height values. And there's really no way for me to know. Your best bet is going to be to export your terrain after making it tileable into whatever program you use to create your textures or your splat map and to do it that way or to manually go in and use the terrain texture brush tool to clean things up. One last thing I want to mention is the make height map tileable button that works with the undo operation. However, for some reason, the any changes to alpha maps will not work with the undo system. So I've had to implement my own solution. So if you don't like the way this alpha map looks and you want to redo it, you need to click this undo alpha map changes button. Uh, just beware, this option will disappear obviously if you save your scene or if you exit the project. So you want to really make sure that you have your alpha map looking how you want before you go on to do other things. Alright, that covers that tool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.